right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, coming to you from a sunny San Diego. And I'm joined by Michael Dietrich Chastain, who is in North Carolina today, correct, Michael? That's correct. A beautiful day here in North Carolina as well. Excellent. Uh, and Michael is a, is a coach who works with professionals to, to uh, achieve peak performance. But you have a book coming out in a number of weeks, Michael, that uh, we want to discuss today. So maybe you want to tell people about the genesis of the book, what the book is about, and then we'll get into discussing it. Sure. Sounds great. So over the course of my career, I've, I've spent the, all of my career doing uh, some kind of human development work, some kind of change management and in the context of, of a few different lenses, one of which was as a therapist working with a wide variety of, of you know, changes that we go through it, uh, as challenges exist professionally and personally. And so I saw a lot of variety of uh, human experience through that lens. And then the work that I do now is corporate consulting work. And so we work with teams and leaders to improve things like communication, emotional intelligence, and, and leadership. And throughout this, this career that I've had, I've noticed these primary uh, elements of our lived experience that always seem to show up in regards to effective change making. Mm. And so that's what the book is about. Excellent. And it is an interesting thing uh, that... So many things are in flux and change within our lives uh, and things that are kind of outside our control. And we're constantly having to adapt and, 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 uh, and figure out how to navigate our way through changes that come out of left field. But when we come into a work context, it often feels like people try to get everything neatly controlled and in a box and want the same repetitive thing so that it's almost like it, there's one area I can have complete control on. But change in work is just as, uh, as inevitable and often just as random as it is in life. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think, you know, there's certainly room for having structure and routine sure. and that, that's definitely, a, I think, an ingredient to success. Um, and, you know, our ability to adapt to circumstance and be flexible and be able to move with challenge is a, is a skill as well. You know, I, my belief is that understanding how to navigate change is a meta skill that we can, that we can learn. So what are, some of the, what are some of those skills or what goes into learning to be more adaptive and to be able to uh, take on and, and manage your way? You have a process of managing your way through change. Yeah, in, in my experience, again, working with thousands of clients, whether it be the, you know, the executive uh, in a C-suite position in a corporation or someone that is dealing with a hardship, a, a death, a birth, a divorce, an addiction, um, you know, my belief is that the more integrated we can become with the various aspects of our lived experience, the more effective we become at managing change. And so, you know, looking at all of these various influencers in our life, you know, the way we think, the way we feel, our habits and routines, uh, what we do with our with our body, meaning how much sleep we get, the nutrition, how much we move or don't move, you know, all of these all of these elements. Not to disregard any one of them, um, mm -hmm. because it's often the one that gets disregarded that is the uh, the influencer to failure. So, in other words, what you're saying is that you have to approach it from a kind of holistic point of view and look at all the elements rather than just one, just maybe the work element, but also all of the other influences that are going on to try and get yourself in the right position to focus on what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we see, we see the research to support these things. You know, when we think about things like emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. you know, we see the data that exists when, you know, leaders build really effective emotional intelligence skills that applies to things like productivity and team effectiveness and workplace culture. And so I think that's a nice example of, you know, something that you might not think would apply to the workplace, you know, something involving our emotions and our heart, mm -hmm. and yet it so clearly does. And I think that's the case for many dimensions of our life that often get dismissed as un unimportant, let's say. <laughs> so one of the things that I think your book is going to be about is, is how to predict success or what are the key indicators uh, or predictors of success. And as you and I were talking just before we came on air, I think often people only realize whether they're successful when they actually are successful or not mm -hmm. successful when something fails. But very few people understand what to look for uh, along the way to see whether they are on the right path to success. Mm. 
Yeah, I think, um, and I think that's where the kind of holistic perspective of really evaluating what is influencing me at, at the moment. You know, is it, is it an environment factor, the people, places, and things I'm surrounding myself with? Um, is it a belief that I have that has been ingrained in me from childhood even, or from kind of current, current people that I surround myself with? Uh, is it an emotional component like we just talked about with emotional intelligence? So I think it really requires this evaluative process to, mm -hmm. un, to, to determine, you know, what is influencing success or failure in the moment as we're in the process. And it's uh, interesting what you raise there, because a lot of this has to do, as you said, who you surround yourself and what inputs you take in. And I think that's something that, you know, often people don't look at. They think they're on a singular path and they don't look at all the things that are around them that are influencing that and how you may need to make cha difficult changes in those areas about the inputs you take, what you say to yourself, what you think about, and the people who are influencing you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think that's, that's exactly right. You know, oftentimes we can have a number of elements in, in our favor. You know, we can have our routine really honed in. We can, we're highly productive. Maybe we even have good environments, but it might be our courage that's lacking. It mm -hmm. might be, you know, a, a fear that we have for, for whatever it is and our, um, our resistance to that fear. And in actuality, that's, that's the thing to move toward is, is that fear and, and you know, um, inspiring courage to go after it. And, and one interesting phenomena that I've come across recently and I've been talking about is this concept of, we all know about the fear of failure, okay? That's, that's an obvious one when you embark on something. But the fear of success can be almost as debilitating, if not more so. Uh, and I think that's something that people don't focus on enough and sometimes they don't. Uh, invest enough in something or, or, or even attempt something because of the fear of what will happen if I'm actually successful. Yeah, absolutely. John, I think that uh, that sometimes shows up in, in self-sabotage, which mm -hmm. is even unconscious sometimes, you know, we may have a really awesome opportunity and down the road a bit, we figure out ways, maybe even unconsciously to disrupt that opportunity. And, and I think that to your point, that comes from the fear of success. Yeah. And when you talk about things like emotional intelligence, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of talk about emotional intelligence. So, but can you, for the, for the viewers, explain what you mean by emotional intelligence? And is that something you can, you can train in yourself or you can develop a better muscle memory around? Yeah, absolutely. It is certainly a, a flexible characteristic and we can develop it. And we, and we know that from the research. I think it's also important to note that uh, when you look at emotional intelligence, there are many characteristics within it that you can have well honed or you can have a weakness in. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's an important note to say that, you know, we may have self-awareness that's, that's relatively sophisticated, but our social awareness or our ability to influence others is not so developed. And those are just a, a few examples of many characteristics that can be highly developed or less so within the uh, kind of the umbrella of emotional intelligence. Yeah. So how do you, how do you work on some of those? For instance, uh, you mentioned self-awareness and this to me, self-awareness is the toughest one. If somebody doesn't have self-awareness, you, you can't, it's almost, you can't teach somebody self-awareness. You have to help them somehow discover it, but it's really tough when somebody doesn't have that. So how do you, in your experience, how do you manage somebody through a process of self-discovery? Sure. I, I think there are a number of strategies and tools, which I, I can mention a few tools sure. that we utilize when working with teams and leaders. Um, one is the consistent elicitation of feedback. Mm. And so whether, you know, it, it really in any context, whether you're in a relationship, leading a team, um, trying to improve your business, eliciting feedback can be, you know, very, very helpful in regards to understanding what are our blind spots and improving self-awareness. And I will say, you know, it's not, it, it can, it can be uncomfortable. So it does mm -hmm. take some courage to, to go after feedback, but I think that's a great tool. Um, you know, I really believe that, you know, honing the art and uh, science of asking great questions is a skill set to develop self-awareness, honing into our, our natural curiosity, which for a lot of folks, that is not, that isn't natural. It's not right. natural to, to sit and wait and hold silence and to be curious um, and I think for, for people that are, that are high performers and results oriented and kind of driven towards goals, you know, that can be their developmental edge is just sitting back, listening, asking uh, better questions. And so those are, you know, just like just a couple of simple mm -hmm. tools to be thinking about as it relates to self-awareness. 
and listening obviously is is a big one and that's it's quite a hard one like uh, there's listening and there's you know, active listening and there's actually understanding and and uh, you know working through uh, cognitively what the other person's actually saying as opposed to figuring out what you're going to say next mm -hmm. and uh, and I, that's that seems to be a difficult one and how much we live in this world now where we're so bombarded right we have so many distractions and we're bombarded by information our attention span is less than that of a goldfish now so how do how do you help people to cut out the noise and focus on what is important? Hmm. So I was just talking about this in a in a workshop recently. I think um, you know there's all sorts of ways to deal with high stress circumstance. You know there's there's breathing techniques and there's there's you know stepping away from the situation and all sorts of ways to deal with challenging circumstance right in the moment. However, I think in my experience, the, to, in an answer to your question, the, the better way to set yourself up for success is having some kind of proactive intervention. Mm -hmm. And that means having some kind of daily routine that can manage, that can, that can influence the pressures and stress that, that exists on a daily basis, to your point. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in having some kind of daily practice that has to do with some kind of reflective component and a physical component, some kind of exercise, um, and some kind of meditative component. And I think if people can hone into a regular daily practice, the benefits are, um, are significant. So it's almost what you're saying is to take yourself out of the noise for a moment, whether it's exercising, whether it's meditative, reflective, or whatever, but take yourself out of the noise so that you can focus in on yourself and what's in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. And I think if you can do that on a regular basis and set yourself into a routine of having a daily practice, your ability to be productive and to reduce that noise when it when it inev inevitably comes in uh, will will increase. Yeah. So uh, how also how are some other ways that you can predict uh, you can predict success? What are some other things that you should be looking at? Yeah, so I can tell you, uh, so, the, so the name of the book is called Changes, and mm -hmm. I, can, I can give you a little, little background on it, which might, which might yeah. be interesting. So over the course of my career, when I was thinking about what are these major predictors, I, you know, I, I thought at first, well, it's obviously you know, our emotional self, our psychological self, and our, and our habits and routines, right? Pretty, pretty basic. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, what are some of the other key influencers that I see across the clients that I've worked with? And so I came up with seven. And then I thought, well, I wonder if there's an acronym for this. So if you can imagine, John, like a spreadsheet, of an Excel spreadsheet with all sorts of words on it, dozens and dozens mm -hmm. of words. And, um, and, and eventually I landed on changes as the acronym, funny mm -hmm. enough. And right. so, so what it stands for is uh, cognition, heart, action, the way we think, our emotional self, like we talked about, our habits and routines, nourishment, which is how we move, how we eat, how we sleep, mm -hmm. how we nourish our body. Guts, which we talked about a little bit, our, our ability to act, our ability to be courageous. And then environment, the people, places, and things that we surround ourselves with. And that includes virtually, it includes our communities, it includes our teams. And then finally, spirit, which is the, um, the encompassing uh, aspect of our belief systems. So not, not only religious, but belief in what we're capable of. We talked a little bit about self-sabotage mm -hmm. today, and that certainly encompasses a belief structure. Sure. And so that's a that's a quick rundown of the seven influencers. No, that's 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 fascinating. I mean, obviously, we could spend a lot of time talking about each of them. But just that last one that you just mentioned, I think that spirit one is is very interesting because sometimes uh, when you're embarking on something, there are there are obviously big roadblocks and obstacles. And sometimes there are moments when you feel like quitting and all of that. And yes, there's guts come into it, as you said, in one of the other ones. But also, I think the 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 spirit or the need or the want inside of you to to succeed that has to be really important so how do you nurture your own spirit mm, that's, a, that's a great question i love that question um i think that it's again it's evaluative process mm -hmm. of looking at you know really really having the courage to evaluate our beliefs and what are they doing to serve our goals that we have professionally and personally and what are they doing to disrupt them Right. And so I think we all at some point in our life take on beliefs that don't serve us mm -hmm. and, and maybe undermine what we say we want to create. Right. And so I think it takes courage to critically evaluate what it is that we believe in, how those beliefs are operationalizing in our life and then having, you know, and then having the courage to change them. 
Yeah, I, I love what you were just saying there about those uh, those beliefs that we've we've taken on board. Because sometimes, if you actually sit down and and really analyze them for a moment you'd be shocked where they've come from and how little basis they have and how you'd be maybe carrying it uh, for 30 years with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we all, and we all do, right? Uh, for sure. Yeah. We, we all have them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, you did one of the other ones you said nourishment. Uh, and I, I guess you mean that both physically and mentally, uh, how mm -hmm. you, how you nourish your, your, your body. One of the things that I think is interesting, and I, I've talked to people a lot about this recently is there's so much negativity out there today in the news. Social media can be very, we're very good at uh, adding two and two together on social media and getting 22, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, and then having a negative impact on us. So I think we have to be very careful what we're nourishing our minds with as much as our mm -hmm. bodies these days and maybe looking at some of these things that we should, may we should uh, control or maybe even remove or certainly reduce. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we are, we're in an interesting time. You know, there is constant influence, you know, whether it's from social media or news or just, you know, driving down the road and, and seeing all the things that are begging for our attention. Um, you know, the people that were around, the communities were around, we're, we're constantly being influenced. And um, yeah, it really, it really necessitates a critical eye to those influences and asking that question, how, how are they serving my betterment or how are they possibly undermining me? Yeah, and even and in team settings, because now you have a collection of people who have all these different influences, and it's you know it's becoming a little more challenging to put cohesive teams together. Yeah, absolutely, and I, and I think these principles apply to teams. You know, cer certainly the, the critical analysis of what are the assumptions that teams are making, right? And and they could you could kind of house that under mm -hmm. under spirit or belief system. Um, you know, looking at how teams are taking time to to nourish their own wellness. And right. how that may be impacting their ability to be present and productive and effective, um, you know, their their courage, their willingness to speak up when when things uh, are obviously going awry. And so, yeah, I think these principles absolutely apply to team effectiveness. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're bumping up against the end of our time, uh, Michael. So I want you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, your organization, and about the book and when it'll be available and where they can get it. Sure. Absolutely. So my organization is called ARC Integrated, A-R-C Integrated, and you can find us, uh, the website is arcintegrated.com. And again, we provide leadership and team consultation, training, and, and executive coaching, uh, specifically around the psychology of business, so things like emotional intelligence and communication. And uh, if they're interested in the book, you can go to thechangesbook.com and find out more information there and get some free opt-ins and, and bonuses. And, and I'll say one other thing about the book that people might find interesting mm -hmm. is that part two of the book is essentially a user guide to answer the question of, say, say I'm a leader that wants to invest in executive coaching, or I'm just mm -hmm. a person that is interested in finding a therapist or a coach, but I'm not really sure how to differentiate between mm -hmm. these various helping professions. Part two of the book walks through that process of how do I decide which profession is right? And then once I've decided, how do I determine which person is the right fit for me? And so, yeah. yeah. I think that that's, fan that's fantastic. It sounds great. I'll check it out because I do believe regardless of what you're doing, we all need help. And sometimes you need different types of help at different junctures. And this is the, you know, the journeys we're on are not ones that we need to take all on our own. There are, there are experts out there who can help us at different points of the journey. And, and I, it sometimes frustrates me because I see people will invest in coaches for their hobbies, uh, but they won't invest in coaches for their life or for their career, the thing that puts bread on their table. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, you make a great point that we, we don't have to do it alone. And, and oftentimes having a third party can be, um, can accelerate, can accelerate our path toward what we want to create in our life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Michael Dietrich Chastain, this has been really interesting. I look forward to the book uh, Changes. And you said thechangesbook.com to check it out early and get uh, get on your mailing list. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.